In this episode of Know Your Shortcuts, we're going to be setting up a shortcut button that starts our stream, another that starts both our recording and a playlist intro sequence, and then we'll end the stream and recording together with a third button. But I'll also add a little twist to this last part, so stick around. Hi, I'm Heath from vMix. This is the second episode of our series covering some of our most useful shortcuts. So if you're new to vMix, be sure to check out episode one where I go through the basics of how shortcuts work and where to find the full list of them. If you don't have a copy of vMix, head to vMix.com and download our free 60-day trial to follow along. The trial is an unwatermarked version of our top tier vMix Pro edition and offers all the features. vMix comes in a few different editions, but the shortcuts we'll look at today will work in all of them. They are start streaming, start recording, start playlist, stop recording, and stop streaming. I'm also going to touch on start stop streaming and start stop recording because they work in a similar way and have advantages and disadvantages over their counterparts. If you're interested in a particular shortcut function, just jump to it in the timeline. In this session, I'm going to be combining shortcuts in a couple of ways, so some shortcuts will be paired up with others to achieve different things. You might not realize this, but you can set multiple shortcuts to run from the same button. More on that later. For now, let's get started. Here we are in the vMix interface. I've already added my camera with embedded audio, an intro video for my live stream, and a title. The first shortcut functions we'll be looking at are start streaming and start stop streaming. Start streaming will only ever start a stream, while start stop streaming will toggle depending on the current state. So if you're not yet streaming, this function will start the stream, and if you are already streaming, it will end the stream. Pretty simple. By default, these functions have the same effect as clicking the stream button down here with your mouse. Two things to note. One, you'll need to set up a streaming destination before this button or any shortcuts have any effect. To do this, click on the gear icon beside the stream button, and if you need help working out how to set up your stream, I've put a link in the description that goes over this. And two, you might be going, if the button is right there on the screen, why make a shortcut for it? Well, while a mouse is very versatile, you need to find the cursor on the screen and then make sure that you don't miss when you click the button. These don't sound like difficult tasks, but believe me, when you're trying to do a few things at once and maintain as much eye contact with the camera and or production as possible, having physical buttons that don't move about is typically much faster and more effective. All right, let's set up the shortcuts by going to Settings, and then Shortcuts, and then Add. From here, we need to set up a key. So I'll click on Find and press a button. For us, we're going to press S for Stream and click OK. And now we need to set the function. The function is related to streaming, so I'll search for the word Stream. And here I can see all of my streaming options, and the two that we're looking at right now are Start Stop Streaming and Start Streaming right here at the top. There are pros and cons for using either. If you select Start Stop Streaming, you only need one button to achieve both functions. But if you accidentally press that button twice, you may stop your stream when you don't want to. Using the Start Streaming means that you need to have a second button for Stop Streaming, but it also means that you won't make a mistake. So for me, because I've got a keyboard and I've got a lot of buttons available to me, I'm going to use Start Streaming to protect myself a little bit. So I'm clicking on Start Streaming. And now we have the option to add a value. The value in this instance is which number stream we want to stream to. Now we're only streaming to our first stream, and if you read at the top here, that would mean typing in zero. But by default, if we type nothing, it will stream to all of the streaming services that we have selected. I've only selected one, and so we'll just leave that blank. Now we can set a title. I'm going to call this stream. And then we could set a description if we want, but I'm not going to worry about it. And then the display option, if you watched the first episode of this series, you would have seen that this is really only for other types of controllers and not for keyboards, so I'm not going to worry about it. We can choose whether to make it a local shortcut. I am going to do this so that when I press this button, it only streams in this particular preset. And so in future, if I'm running another preset, I don't accidentally start streaming just randomly by pressing the S key. And finally, 
uh, we will show it in the web controller. So I'll leave that ticked and I'll go to OK. And let's test this out. We press the S key. Now we wait a few seconds for the stream button to turn orange and then it will turn red. And now that it's red, we know our stream is completely healthy. A good way to deal with the unknown time it takes for your stream to turn red is to have a simple introduction video with non-critical information that you can begin as soon as your stream button turns orange. This way, when the stream starts, a video is already running and there's no dead air. We'll go over that now. So as I was just saying, it's handy to have an intro video that can be running when your stream starts. I've got this video here that is a countdown video. So if the stream kicks in right at the start of the video playing or a few seconds later, it won't matter. It's also handy if the video plays, then automatically transitions to your first shot. And why not have a title turn up for a bit too? In vMix, we can do this in a handful of different ways, but today we'll use a playlist. Uh, also, I don't just want to start the playlist intro sequence, I also want to start recording so that I have a high quality backup of my stream that I can choose to upload later if I wish. So that means we've got a few things to do. Firstly, we'll set up the playlist by clicking on the playlist gear icon. And then we're going to set up our sequence. So we're going to start with the video. Then we're going to add my camera after the video is completed. And finally, we will put a title over the top. Now there's lots of things you can do with playlists, but we're just going to cover some of the basics and you can check out a different video that I'll link in the description that goes through all of the playlist functions. So the first thing I want to do is set up the transition from the video to my camera. So I'm going to double click on my camera, which is labeled Heath, and that allows me to access the settings of this transition in and all the settings for this particular input in the playlist. The starting position is irrelevant to me. The duration is important. How long do I want before I move on to the next step in the playlist? So for this, we're going to leave it maybe at about three seconds because that way it's enough time for it to transition to my camera. And then the next thing to happen is my title. So three seconds is a pretty good wait period. And now I can pick what transition I want. I'm going to use the barn door and I'm going to make it quite a slow transition. I might make it one second and click OK. So now I've got a transition. Now I want to trim up the back end of my intro video. I'd like to have a smooth transition from the video to my camera. So I'm going to trim the end point back a little bit so that at that point we start transitioning to my camera. Now I know that this video is 16 seconds long, so I'm going to make the end point 15 seconds instead, or the whole duration 15 seconds, so that it ends just that little bit earlier. Now with my transition, this is for when it comes in, and I don't want to adjust this. I would prefer it as a cut, so that it starts completely clear and visible. And I'll click OK. And finally, we've got our title. So I'll double click on that. And here we can select how long we want the title to be visible for. It's probably going to take most people five seconds to read my title quite easily. And we can pick a transition. I'm going to leave that as cut because titles kind of had their own in and out sequences if we make them overlays. So rather than having a display type normal, we're going to change this to overlay one. Overlay one I've got set as a full screen overlay. I'll click on OK. And so now this is our sequence. We have our video, it plays almost to its end point and then transitions with a barn door effect to my camera. And within three seconds of my camera appearing, my title will appear. And then after five seconds of my title being there, it will transition out. Now it's time for us to set up the shortcuts for playlist and record. So we'll head up to settings. We'll go to shortcuts. We'll click on add and click on find. Now for this one, this first one we'll do record. I'll use the R key, click OK. And for the function, we're looking for a record function. So I'll type record and we're looking for start recording right here. Now at this point, I could use start stop record, but I'm not going to because I'm going to be pairing this up with another function. And once you pair two functions up, you never want to fall out of sequence where you want to start one 
and the other one's already running, but you want it to start, but because you're using start stop, it stops it. So we're not gonna use a toggling function because we're combining it with another shortcut. We're gonna use a fixed function, which is start record. We could give this a title, we could give it a description, all of those things, but all I'm gonna do is change it to a local shortcut so that I don't accidentally trigger recordings in another preset down the track. And I'll click OK. And now we need to set up another key for starting the playlist. So I'll click on Add. But here's the trick, I'm gonna use the same key. So I'll click R again, OK. And now I can bind another function to the same R key. We're looking for the playlist start function, which is start playlist. And here I could add some more information. All I'm gonna do again is set it as a local shortcut and click OK. So now we've got two new shortcuts and note they're both red, unlike the one that's black at the top. The reason that they're red is it indicates that two shortcuts are sharing the same shortcut key. Now, this is a good thing. It highlights to you that you've got two things that are operating off the same key, and it helps you if you accidentally do it to notice. But it also tells you that you've got it set up correctly, and red is good if you're intentionally binding two shortcuts to the same key. All right, let's go to OK. And now all we need to do is press the R key to trigger those two functions. Now, I'm already recording, as you can see down there, so pressing the R key for the recording side of things isn't gonna have any effect, but it will start our playlist. So let's go. And there we go, look at that. It has effectively finished a little early, thrown my title up at the end here, and hopefully after five seconds, it disappears. So now I think it's time to move on to our final round where we'll look at stop recording and stop streaming. All right, these are definitely some of our easiest shortcuts to set up. And if you've watched up to this point, I think you could set these up without any guidance from me. So because of that, we're gonna do something a little more advanced. We're gonna set up one key to end the recording and another key that ends the stream and triggers the first key to also end the recording. Here's why you might wanna do this. Sometimes you might have a show where you occasionally have a post show for the live stream, but only wanna keep the main show for your recording and for uploading later. This method allows you to choose to end the whole show or end the recording only and then end the stream later. So let's go back up to the settings once more. And now we'll go back to shortcuts, back to add, and now to find. And firstly, we're looking for something to stop our recording. So I'm gonna use the P button for post show, which is probably a little bit confusing, but what I'm thinking is when it comes time to run the post show, we're only gonna to wanna to stop the recording. So we're gonna use P for go to post show. That's gonna stop our recording and allow us to continue into the post show without stopping the stream. So we want stop recording. I'm gonna to go to record again and hunt for stop recording right there. I'm gonna give this one a title. I'm gonna call it post show. and click on local shortcuts and then okay. And then I'm gonna add one more for ending both the stream and triggering the end of the recording. This time I'm gonna use the end key because this is the absolute end of the show and the post show and everything. So it's a good key to use, it's one of my favorites. I'll click okay. Now the function we're looking for is to stop streaming. So I'll type stream and find stop streaming. I could put the value in, but there's no need because it's my only stream and I wanna stop everything that's streaming. Here we'll put a title in, we'll call it end all. And I won't worry about the description or the display. I will make it a local shortcut once again and make sure that it's shown in the web controller. And I'll explain why later. And now before clicking okay, we're gonna to go to the advanced tab here. And here's the trick, we're gonna set up 
P, which was our post show, and add it. And now click OK. OK, so now we've got two buttons. The first one just stops the recording. The second one stops the stream and triggers the stop recording function, which is pretty cool. Now, in round two, we learned that you can set two shortcuts to the same key. So the other way we could have done this would have been by creating a second stop recording shortcut that uses the end key as well. So I would have one stop recording that uses P, one stop recording that uses end, as well as a stop streaming that uses end. However, the reason the advanced way is sometimes better is that when you go to the web controller and look at all the shortcuts, these are not combined. So you may end up with more than you need and a need to press more buttons. So having one shortcut that triggers another is a way to overcome this. Now, th that was probably pretty confusing. So let's quickly take a look at the web controller so that you can see what I mean. The easiest way to access it is from the settings right here where we are and going to web controller and then double clicking on the hyperlink right here. Here we can see all the shortcuts we've created. We can actually do a lot of things in the web controller and I've linked a video about that in the description. The key thing to notice is that every shortcut, even if they both share the same key, is listed here. So for example, if I wanted to start my recording and my playlist like we did in round two earlier, I'd need to click both shortcuts. However, in our current round, if we want to end the stream and our recording, we can do this with the end all button because that will end the stream and also trigger the end recording shortcut for us. Pretty handy. So there we go. That's seven shortcuts you should know. I hope that this has helped you understand when and how to use them and that ultimately they make your live streaming and your producing life easier. If you have some favorite shortcuts or some tips for using these ones, let people know in the comments. And if you'd like some help with anything vMix related, you can probably hunt down a vMix video here on YouTube, or you can head to our website at vmix.com and take a look at our documentation, our knowledge base articles, and our forums. You can also email us from there. Our team are super responsive and love working with you to find solutions. So thanks for joining me on this episode of Know Your Shortcuts. I'll catch you on the next one. 